Senior Workplace Strategy Manager with Tenant and Partner. And uh, she is uh, uh, working with uh, the Swedish workplace and property advisory company Tenant and Partner to help their companies realize their employees and uh, organizational potential and strength through high-performing workplaces. And Kati is also a member of the leadership team at Workplace Evolutionaries, a fast-growing international workplace community where she is lead for the WeHub's global expansion. And apparently there's 30 hubs globally already. So yes. Growing fast? Growing fast, growing especially fast. in North America and in Europe. Fantastic. And you're going to be talking to us today about six workplace strategy essentials to future-proof your organization. Yes. I'm really looking forward to your presentation. Please take it away. Thank, Thank you. you. So hi, everyone. I'm so happy and excited to be here with you today. I can feel the energy and I can feel the connection, even though we are not physically together, but we are virtually together. Um, and as Malcolm said, I'm working at Tenant and Partner, where I help organizations with their workplace strategies. Uh, and I've been working with physical, digital and psychosocial workplace areas for the past 20 years, before Tenant and Partner also in companies like Microsoft, Core and Skanska. And as Malcolm said, what I'm going to share with you today is six workplace essentials, strategy essentials to really future-proof our organizations, to make our workplaces stay performing over time. And let's start by framing the drivers we see today. As we all know, we are living in a VUCA world. It's volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. And we don't know what's coming with the next wave or when it's coming. And this has been even more clear to us now in the light of the past month's events. And this is how it will keep looking like. The waves are coming and we just need to learn to be agile and surf and master them, both as people and as organizations. And I can see a few major trends shaping the world of work and future workplaces. Our values are developing why, where and how we work and what we want to get out of work. And the rapid technological development also, our world is getting smaller and smaller and more connected than ever. And there is an increased focus on both sustainability and health and safety. And I also believe that in the post-COVID world of work, the COVID will actually act as a catalysator and increase the focus of some of these trends and increase them more develop our values and also increase focus on sustainability and health and safety. So from these trends, let's look at how well our workplaces are actually doing today. Unfortunately, not that well at all. People are not feeling that well. We are not engaged. We are stressed. We are not that effective and productive as, as we could, and our organizations could definitely be more attractive, productive, efficient, sustainable and secure. There is a lot of improvement potential. And the main reason for this is that we don't have the six workplace essentials in place yet. So let's look at those. And let's start with number one and that is strategic alignment. That is where we need to start to really align our workplace with the mission, vision, strategy and goals of our organization. And traditionally, we've been working with our workplace operationally and reactively. And now finally, we see and treat the workplace more as a strategic tool that it really is and should be. 
And we try to, with the help of the workplace, increase attractiveness, productivity, efficiency, sustainability and security in our organizations. And in this way, the workplace really becomes a strategic tool, a super tool for us to enable, enable what we want to achieve, to reach our vision and goals. And the number two workplace strategy essential is people centricity. This is my favorite. And the most important thing to remember here is that workplace is about engagement and empowerment. Nothing more, nothing less. Simple as that. Engagement and empowerment of our people to help them be as productive and performing as possible, engaging and empowering them. Whatever their role or task is, their preferences are, whoever they are, it is for our people and their work that we have the workplaces. And what we can see here is that we have traditionally had a lot of focus on technology and premises in itself, instead of focusing on them as enablers of what we actually want to achieve. A really great workplace experience and tool box for our employees to engage and empower them. So what is the experience that we want to create for our employees? Well, the workplace experience doesn't start anymore when we enter the office. It starts already the first thing in the morning when we pick up our phone and the last thing in the evening before we go to sleep. So we need to create a consistent workplace experience the whole way. And this has been maybe the most common question that I got over the years. What does the future workplace look like? When I worked as the head of workplace uh, innovation at a core group, I had developed a very good answer for this. And my answer was that the future workplace is a platform for organizational culture, brand and collaboration. That was a few years ago, but I still think it's valid. But is that really the right question that we should ask ourselves? I don't think so. I think that we should instead ask ourselves, what does our future employees and our current employees look like? Who are they? What do they do? What is their roles and work and responsibilities? What do they like and dislike? And so on, so that we can create the experience and the toolbox to really realize their and our organization's potential. And what we can see is that it is not just the technology that has changed and developed rapidly, but also we as humans and employees. And this is Jacob Morgan's evolution of the employee. And on the right side, we have all the future things, but it's not futuristic. We had that yesterday, and we will have that even more in the post-COVID world of work. Since we have, during the past few months, really practiced remote working, remote leadership, and self-leadership. And it has worked pretty well. We have still been able to be pretty effective and productive. So what is then the most important for us as people and employees? What is really important is that what we do feels meaningful, that it creates value, it makes a difference, and that we have autonomy, that we can influence our work and our lives and master it, that we can develop our skills and our knowledge and relationships, that we have good relationships with each other, also, of course, at work. And the word together here is really an enhancer. Together, we can create more value, we can influence more, we can develop each other more, and we can have those good and also some deep relationships, and above all, have great fun 
together. And the third workplace strategy essential is workplace holistics. Workplace and workplace experience is really about holistics. The digital, the physical, the psychosocial workplace areas. And with the psychosocial workplace areas, I mean both the leadership culture where you're working. And all these parts are intertwined together and very much interdependent. And together they create our experience. And often in our organizations, these areas are also synonymous with IT, real estate, FM. FM stands for facility management and HR. And how do we then work within these workplace areas today in our organizations? Unfortunately, we can still see a lot of silos, workplace islands here. In some projects, when we, for example, move to activity-based working, we have a more cross-functional, holistic approach about the workplace. But in most cases, it's still not, it's still a lot of silos and islands, especially on the strategic level when work with the workplace. And what we of course need to do is to work simultaneously with both the digital, physical and psychosocial workplace areas in our organization. And it doesn't automatically have to mean that we need to have those units in the same organizational unit. We can do it in different ways. And one way could be, for example, to form a workplace forum on a strategic level where we really build bridges between the workplace areas and increase the knowledge, but above all, set the direction for the workplace of our organization. And the first assignment for the forum would be to together set the common picture of the current workplace and really identify the challenges and possibilities, improvement possibilities that we have, and then set the direction together for our workplace. Number four workplace strategy essential is workplace continuity. We have traditionally worked with our workplace a lot as a project, as a destination. But workplace is not a destination. It is a journey, a process, ongoing process without an end. And the only thing we know for sure is that things changes continuously. The needs of our employees and our operations, the prerequisites around us, the preferences of our customers, the technology, the society, everything. So we need to monitor, adapt and adjust our workplace continuously over time, so that it supports our people and our operations all the time. So if we would have to bet on one key to proactivity in this workplace journey, what would that be? I really believe that it is collaboration. The work is so complex today and we cannot have all the needed information, knowledge, experience ourselves anymore, and not even in the organization. So we need to collaborate within the organization, but also outside the organization to perform best. And when it comes to the workplace, we need to create a platform for collaboration and it needs to provide us with all the capabilities that we need, both on individual, on team and organizational level, and both in the digital, physical and psychosocial workplace areas. And within the psychosocial workplace area, it is really important that we create a culture of trust, because that's a foundation for our collaboration. Without trust, there will be no good collaboration. And also important here is to remember that we as people and also 
our teams are different. So we need to have a flexible platform to feed all the needs and preferences that we have in our organization. And what about the new normal then after COVID-19? What should we be thinking about there in our strategy? As we can see in this picture, there was pretty low working from home figures before the pandemic. Low percentage, mostly as an exception, feeling of having to explain oneself when working from home, not that much feeling of trust. But now we have worked from home for the past months and learned and showed that we can actually be effective and productive. And yes, many of us, including me, think it's a bit boring and we want to see each other again and meet our colleagues and friends and customers and partners. But we have made it work. So we will also, in the post-COVID work, adapt this to the new normal. And I believe that we will work more from home and other places in future, definitely. Uh, but still come to the office as well. And that's why we also need to develop the office more to a meeting place and de develop, continue to develop our digital workplace and ways of working to remote working and digital working uh, in different ways, but also our leadership and culture to continue developing the remote leadership, self-leadership, and that great cultural trust. Number five workplace strategy essential is change management. And we have traditionally focused a lot on technical implementation when, for example, implementing Office 365 or activity-based working. We move to the cloud, we enable the technology, we refurnish the office and so on. But we haven't been that good at really changing the behavior and where you're working. So we haven't got the value of these transformations and investments because we haven't focused enough on change management in our organizations. And now it's very important that we develop even better change management skills and capabilities in our organizations. Because in the end, most development and value creation will be more about a shift in the mindset and behavior than a shift in the technological and spatial solutions. So what shall we start and stop doing? What should we continue doing? Why and how? And the sixth and last workplace strategy essential is authenticity. Practice what we preach or walk the talk of my own favorite, drinking our own champagne. But should this not be the other way around instead? Shouldn't we say, preach what we practice, talk the walk and sharing our own champagne with others? Authenticity and transparency is really important already today, but even more in the future. We cannot anymore say one thing, neither to our employees, nor customers, or partners, or society, and then do something else. We must always count on that it will come in the open, in this interconnected world of ours, and then we are doomed and have lost our trust. Better to be authentic and transparent and genuine in every possible way and let it permeate the whole organization. This is something that works for us, something we really, really believe in. So that's why we also want to offer it to you, dear customer. And if it's not that way it is in our organization today, then we need to change it. And now we have reached the final slide and wrapping up of the workplace strategy essentials. And it's all connected. 
So let's together future-proof our organizations through these six workplace essentials and make sure our workplace stays performing over time. And we have never had a better opportunity and it has never been as urgent at it, at, <laughs> as it is today. It's now or never. The workplace strategy of no return. The journey has just begun. And for heaven's sake, don't forget the coffee in your workplace strategy. Thank you. Looking forward to follow your and our workplace journeys together. Thank you very much, Kathy. It was great. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I, I'm all for a coffee first strategy. <laughs> I think that's always a great. One of the things that I just want to touch on, we've got a lot of questions from the audience, so I'm going to make sure we get to those. But one of the things that we, you talked about was uh, you had a slide where you talked about autonomy, mastery, purpose and relationship. And of course, autonomy, mastery and purpose being um, the self-determination theory. And one of the things that I've been thinking about is once people have been through this experience of working from home, they're going to demand more autonomy than they've ever had before. Well, I'm wondering what your thoughts are, are about that, about what you think people's demands about the level of autonomy they have over their time and where they work, how that's going to change from this experience. Yeah, I really do think so. And we have got a lot of autonomy during the last months, especially here in Sweden, mm -hmm. where we have been able to decide from where to work and even go to the office sometimes if we wanted to. Yep. Um, and of course, I don't think that we are going back to not, well, having that mm -hmm. um, possibility to actually decide for ourselves what works best for us and our work. Yeah. So once now we've gone through that door, it's going to be hard to get employees to come back. Yes. And they won't. Yes. Unless they, unless they have to. Yes. And yeah. if somebody takes that away from me, well, I quit, I go right. to another. I'm going to look for the opportunity yeah. that has it. Yes. So, you know, the work from home, f working, flexibility, f working flexibility has been really high on employee demand and wish lists over recent years. But I think, you know, we can almost remove it as a perk and say this is going to be just something that's expected. Uh, yeah. Just like having good Wi-Fi and yeah. coffee and those things. It's like, yeah, of course I'm going to have this flexibility. One of the questions that came through from the audience this is, uh, is from Amy. Hi, Kati. What have been the biggest change that you have experienced from introducing these strategies in your business? What have been the biggest changes that you've seen from introducing them into your business? Well, I see a lot of uh, good development, but still I see that there is almost no organization who have like all these strategy essentials in place. Mm -hmm. And it's so simple in reality, yeah. but then we don't do it. Right. And, and do you think we haven't done it? Because up until now, up until the COVID pandemic and the lockdown, so much of what we were talking about was theory, right? Mm -hmm. But now we've had, we've been pushed, this is now a practical reality. And now that it's become a practical reality, do you think that, what, what do you think will be sort of the first changes that you expect companies are going to make or going to see as, okay, we don't need to go back from this. What, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think that it's a lot about a knowledge gap um, and about those workplace islands mm -hmm. that we don't work uh, with workplace holistically. Yeah, yeah. So we actually don't know about those things. Yeah, those silos that you put up were really, yeah. you know, really, uh, you know, it was HR and IT and then facilities Real estate management. FM, yeah. And if they're not working together and don't have a combined strategy, then of course it's going to be really difficult to move forward with uh, discovering some new solutions yeah. or even having a common goal. Yeah. And I, and I think that we have during the past months also get a better understanding of those different uh, workplace areas. Yeah. And uh, a lot of us have been seeing, okay, this works very good remotely. And this still would work better in the office or yeah. just meeting physically. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and we have a lot of information and data about that now. Yes. And, but I think one of the other things that's going to come out of this is a lot of the companies that supply us with technologies have just got a gazillabytes of data over the last months 
about what they need to be developing for us. We have a really interesting question from Emma. Uh, COVID-19 or remote work does not treat all knowledge workers similarly. Inequality seems to be present more than ever. For instance, gender inequality has been present for many, um, for many that are caring for children. Any thoughts on the future of the work, uh, future of work in regards to a more, to more workplace equality coming in? Very good uh, question, uh, and I think that we are moving in a good direction, mm -hmm. and uh, we as people and employees will uh, demand more of that, and uh, you know, having that mm -hmm. um, uh, influence on on our work so that we can actually uh, make our lives yes. work also. I mean, one of the things that, that fascinated me when I moved to Stockholm from Australia, being a love refugee here with my <laughs> lovely, lovely Swedish wife, was I was really amazed how many men took paternity leave. Yeah. And they saw it as completely normal. And that, of course, I'm going to take my paternity leave. Of course, I'm going to leave work to pick my children up. And I, I think that, you know, the things that we're discovering now, I mean, I've really enjoyed picking my children up more often. I've really enjoyed being with them more than I have because I'm not traveling. Yeah. And also you have learned a lot from that. Yeah. So you have actually become a much better employee and leader. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, you, but you're right. Yeah. Um, Jeff, uh, oh, sorry, Gerlo, Gerolf. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name. Gerolf uh, says, Kati, great talk, but let me turn your points upside down. What are the greatest challenges to this strategy? What are the greatest challenges well, to this strategy? Well, um, I think that it's very easy for many companies now because they have uh, had, a lot of companies have had a very tough times and still have, mm -hmm. to start looking only on the cost efficiency. Mm -hmm. And uh, so focusing on the bottom line, but at the same time, we still need to balance it and have the attractiveness and productivity, yeah. and sustainability because also. Because you talked about that, of like, don't think about what the new workplace will look like. Think about what the new worker will look like yeah. or the new employee, rather, will look like. And so how the work will look like also. How yeah. will the work will look like. But what are those employees going to be wanting? When you look at that tree, I didn't, didn't get to see too much detail on it. In and what will engage them yeah. and empower them? What kind of tools yeah. do they need for yeah. the work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, that next employee that's coming up, the next generation of employees, do you think that if we're not planning for them now, we're going to see like a huge divide between companies that evolved and didn't? Actually, what I believe is that we have all the variation already in mm -hmm. our organizations mm -hmm. and that it's really not a generational thing okay. right now. Great. But if we have that flexible platform yeah. uh, with solution fitting different people and needs, mm -hmm. then we can actually, it doesn't matter what kind of generation it is. But I think that in most of the organizations, uh, we already have that variation. And even though we are born in the same year, yeah. we are not the same. Yeah, yeah. and there's a, there's a lot of variance. So I have one last question. You can give me a quick answer to it. Um, I'll which was, try my very best. Yeah, that's great. But uh, Nari was asking, how do you see the future of workplace learning? What do you see the evolution there? What's the future of workplace learning when you look at all yeah. of your strategies? I really think, and I worked uh, at Microsoft, that we need to be know-it-all, not know-it-all, but learn-it-alls instead yeah. of know-it-alls. Yeah. Um, and, and really in everything we try to do mm -hmm. uh, to learn uh, from each other, but also really, yeah, and, and mistakes are maybe the things that you learn best yep. from also. So have that kind of culture yep. to really explore and learn. Yep. Uh, and no one know what's come with the next wave also. So Absolutely. we need to have that agility, yeah, that agility. and learning mindset in yeah. our organization. I think that Giselle touched on that really beautifully, that, you know, that agility is really what also enables the humanity yes. to come out. Yeah. Kati, I loved your talk. Thank you so much for being here with us. If you can just stay with us for a moment while I uh, announce the, uh, the next things, that'd be great. <laughs>